Okay, these two terms are contributing to the potential energy. Now what about the first term, which is V prime X naught, means the derivative of this one, V double prime 8 X naught. So let me write that now for for V prime eight X naught is X naught X naught is the minimum is the minimum way is the minimum waiting point is the minimum waiting point then I can say that this thing is also going to zero. Why? What is V prime? V prime is a derivative. Now from the definition of derivative, this is the variation in V, mean the first order derivation in V, which is the first order derivation in V, which is at the minimum point, means close to X naught. Look here, let me show you this thing, that why this contribution is also meaningless. Look here, how you write a derivative, for example, this will be dV over dx, because this is the first derivative, and you will say limit, and x goes to x naught, and here it will be the value of v at x, right, plus x naught minus v of x divided by x minus x naught. We define a derivative like this. The value of a function is some increment, and then the actual function divided by the increment which we have produced there means this is actually delta v divided by delta x such that x is going to x naught this condition i can also write that x minus x naught is equal to zero you can write x minus x naught is going to zero if you move it here so here, x minus x naught. Now, if this point means if it is here, then it is just slight variation from here, slight variation in this direction, and the value of v at that point. Clear? So it means that this dv over dx contribution will also go to zero. It will also be negligible. It will contribute, but the contribution will be negligible. And we will say that V of X here is approximately this term only, half V double prime of X and then it X naught and here X minus X naught whole squared. This is approximately equal to this. Now you might ask that when we prime of this one is approximately going to zero, the first derivative is going to zero, why not the double derivative is going to zero? Okay? Now look, the double derivative here mean a small change there. Now inside if this I find the change, inside a small change, if you find another change then it will be comparatively bigger in size. Clear? Like for example, for example, you are stepping like this and this is your first derivative. Now inside this one, you want to take small steps. 
means double derivative like you are then derivating that step again then the contribution of this double will be comparatively more that's why we keep this term and then it is having this x square term so from here if i compare this with this half is there k is actually this v double prime in x not is a number it's a double derivative and this is has been calculated at x not point so it means it's a constant and this v double prime sub is the spring constant for our geometry for this geometry so we say that the potential the potential may not be parabolic at all points okay but mainly the main contribution will be from the parabolic portion here clear out of this potential out of this potential the main contribution is from the parabolic term these are zero and these are zero, going to zero minimum contribution the first term is not contributing at all because it has nothing to do with the force the second term contributes to the force but its contribution is very small these terms this will contribute more the triple derivative because it is then in the small change another small change and then another small change triple derivative this will contribute very high but this contribution is lowered by this thing x because x is very very small and its cube is making the contribution of this one less and that's the reason that only this term survives and if you look at the page of your uh, book then a certain potential has been plotted like this and in this direction you are having x and in this direction you are having v of x now the potential is like this is like this look here we can have the parabolic shape here as well right because this is also parabolic shape this one the parabolic shape is also here as well but if i look this is my local minima let's say this is x not point then this is a very perfect parabolic shape you can see here so this one is our half k x square term because this is x square if i plot this this is x square parabolic so inside this is any potential in that potential at a certain point you are having a very perfect parabolic this means this is actually all these terms are here for example some will have like if you throw a mass here a rolling ball here then the ball will go easily from here but it will get trained here because in this function this is the local minima this is not the minima right this is not the minimum of the function not this one this is the local minimum so at x not we are having this half k square potential so that's the reason that we will uh, when we will solve the non zero potential we will take the value of the potential is half k x square clear means that is the logic for taking the potential equal to this one which is your spring potential as well the potential energy okay
Okay, so our potential is half k x squared, where we know that omega is equal to k over m square root. If I square both sides, then omega square m is equal to k. So I put the value of k from there, and the potential will come out to be half m omega squared x squared. This is the potential that we have. And now I will come to the time independent Schrodinger wave equation, which is minus h bar squared over 2m d squared psi over dx squared plus v of x psi is equal to e psi. This is our Schrodinger wave time independent equation. Now put the value of v of x here because here it's a function of x. So minus h bar square over 2m d square sine over dx square plus half and m omega square x square sine is equal to e sine. Now this is a second order differential equation and we will have to solve this equation. In order to solve this equation, there are actually two methods. The first method is the algebraic method to solve this one. And the second method is the analytical method for solving this one. The algebraic method is very interesting. And this is being discussed in section 2.3.1, which is the algebraic method. Means we will do algebra work here in order to solve this equation. What is our what is our job? Our job is to find out. The sine is a function of x. This is a differential equation, and we would like to find out sine of x, which will be the solution of this equation. So, let me write this thing that minus h bar square. Can I write it like this? That if I write this is the first portion of the Hamiltonian mean the kinetic energy part which I can write p square by 2m as well or this one I can write in this form look here if I take 1 over 2 m common if I take 1 over 2 m common then what I will get I will get minus h bar square and d square sine over d x square plus what will be here this 1 over 2 has already been taken so this will become m square omega square x square and let's take this sign on this side and it will go from here as well clear and this is then equal to E sine. Now another thing that I can do here is if I write this one instead of h square and minus, if I write it as h bar over i and all this whole square, then I hope you have no objection. Because this will become minus i, because this will become i square, i square is minus, so minus h bar square d square by d x square. Clear? And this one, if I write m omega x whole square, then it's the same equation. So what I have, yes? Psi is common from here in E psi. Now you know about this fact that when you write a, a square minus b square then you know that it can be written as a plus b 
and a minus b. But what if you have a square plus b square? Is you are having here? This is a square plus b square. How we can write this one? Now in factorization form. This I can write a minus b whole square minus 2ab or plus 2ab. But if I write it like this, a plus ib and a minus ib. Can I write like this? Yes, then this is like a plus b a minus b. So when I will write, I will write this one is a square plus a square minus b square. Then it will come out to be a square plus b square. So this is one of the tactic that we can use here. And I write that I write that let's say let's say I have written a b you can write u b whatever you desire but this one I can write is this will be this will be like the product this is a square plus b square so I can write that if I define if I define this, this means three lines means defined days. And I write a plus with a plus symbol. Then what I do? I write 1 over 2m square root. Means I take this one as a square root. And I write that h bar over i d over dx plus m omega x right yes. a plus i define is this is the half of this one means if you square this one it will come here then this one and square this and this one I have written like this. Why a minus? A minus will be minus sign here. So it means that this one, this whole, this one is actually equal to a plus multiplied with a minus. Clear? Means this whole term will come out to be equal to this one. And this is one of the tactic that we did. Okay, we forgot one thing, so I will incorporate that as well. That when we will write this one in the form of a square plus b square, then we will have to write this as i times b. Our b is m omega x, so here I will write i with this one. Clear?